Hi, in this video, we are going to check how to use functions in Swift. Functions is a way where you can actually club together uh, certain instructions or certain uh, statements and call that from many places to get them executed. So if you have a piece of code which you have to put it at multiple places, you can create a function for that and can call that function from those many places. So it makes your uh, program a bit modularized. Now um, we are going to use playground for the whole session so that we can actually see the results right away as and when we do some exercises. Let's define our first function and see how that works. So Swift provides a keyword called func which is like a short form from function uh, which allows you to say that okay I am going to define a function then you need to give a name to that function so I'm just saying say name after that you have to actually say what inputs this function is going to receive. So that comes under the braces. Currently I am saying I am not giving any input and in curly braces you can combine all the instructions which you want this function to be executed. So we will keep growing this function as and when we go but currently let's just say println and um, let's just say hi. Now you can see at this point of time Playground is showing nothing. It is not showing the value of this because this instruction as such or this function as such is not executable. Until unless you don't call the function from somewhere else, it becomes non-executable code and it will be just there, lying there. So as soon as I say, say name and you can see it has started showing that out. Now it is printing here. We will see uh, why it is happening. but it is started showing you hi once you have actually put in the uh, say name i can comment this code and you can see that is gone which means that until unless you don't call it it won't get executed but i can actually call it at from multiple places and you can see it's called by two times and three times so um, that's how it is increasing so you can have a single instruction or a set of instructions which can be executed from multiple places. So now let's talk about why it is printing here rather than on the instruction where we are calling the function. This function as such is not returning any value. Uh, we will see in detail how to return a value from a function. But at this point of time this is not uh, taking any inputs and not returning any value. So if it returns any value it will come here and you will get it printed here. Otherwise, the instructions which is there in the function will get executed and uh, you will see the output here. Now, let's see if we have to pass any variable to the function, how we can do that. Uh, remember this parenthesis, these are there for the inputs. Currently, the blank parenthesis indicates that there is no input or uh, the function does not accept any inputs. The other way of saying the same thing is by putting void here void is an explicit saying that we don't accept anything. Um, I prefer this void method so that uh, by looking that the function you actually explicitly know that okay there is no inputs coming to this function. Now suppose we want to uh, we are currently printing hi and we want to print a name along with it which we want uh, the callers to pass in. How we can do that? What we want is a string type of variable. So you have to define your inputs here in the parenthesis. So I'm just saying str, which is type string. Now this str is the variable name, which is valid from this parenthesis curly braces to this curly braces. So that's the scope of this variable. And it is of type string. Why we have to give the type is because Swift is a um, typecasted language. It needs uh, explicit types for each and everything so that it can do a lot of compile uh, time error correction for you. So currently you are seeing um, an error here. It is because now we have added an argument or a, a input, but it is missing here. We are not passing anything here. So let's pass something and everything becomes correct again, right? But now we are not printing the names. So what we will do is let's start printing the name along with it. And we will say str. Okay, so now you can see it is printing the name. So if I now call the same function, 
with some other name you can see it is showing two times and this is the last time and you can see the full list which is high sanjeev and high test okay so you can see both the values are getting accepted and it is um, getting displayed also first time it is saying high sanjeev second time it is saying high test okay so that's how you can actually pass a value to the functions so let's talk about the expected uh, return values how we can actually return some values from the function so currently if you see this curly brace the, in the function definition between the curly braces and the parentheses there is nothing that is one of the ways to say that we do not return any value the other way of saying the same thing is by putting void which means that we are explicitly saying we don't return any value the third way you can do that is by putting parenthesis here which is again the similar meaning that we do not return any value you remember when you want to say the there are no inputs there are only two ways one was parenthesis another one was parenthesis and void you have three ways to do that here if you explicitly put this arrow and put a parenthesis that means you don't have any output you can put a void here or you can actually totally exclude this whole thing and uh, it itself means that you are not returning anything but what if if you want to return anything so let's create a new function which is called sum it's going to take two integer variables and it is going to return int the only difference between a input and output parameters are input parameters you have to actually give a name which is like uh, name colon type the output parameter you need to only give a type because it doesn't need to know the name of output parameter it just has to has a return statement and you will have to put a return statement in all logical paths to make sure that it is always returning some a uh, type of type of variable which you wanted to return so here we are seeing an error because uh, we have said it we are going to return int but we are not returning anything so we need to put a return statement say x plus y so which means now if you pass any two values right now it is going to give you a sum of those two values so let's pass two values here and you can see it is saying 8 the same thing we can pass again with another two values and you can see the result here okay so that's how you can actually define your return values from a function so uh, if you see currently we are calling the sum function and it is returning a value which we are seeing here but we are not storing that value anywhere and swift allows you to actually ignore the uh, return output from a function and that's what we are doing in both the lines um, if we want we can actually store that output somewhere and um, this is actually a fine statement in swift where you can actually combine the function call with a variable declaration so currently we are defining a variable called x and we are saving the sum of 2 and 6 to that x the same way we can do with constant also and um, that way y will become a sum of 14 and 20 how the swift works with this is um, it actually checks the signature of the function so currently the signature of this function is int and int as a parameter and int as an output and it understand that this function is always going to return an integer and that's how it is going to type cast the variables which you are defining and you don't have to define a specific integer variable it understand that and it uh, puts the type cast accordingly the type cast also works when you try to do some invalid operations in terms of um, suppose a function which is returning a integer and you are trying to append a string to it compiler will give you a uh, error right away saying that uh, this is not a valid operations you can also externalize the parameter names in swift once you do that your callers actually has to put a variable name in front of the value uh, you can't actually call like that 
uh, what you need to do is you need to actually put a hash in front of the names so like i am saying hash y which means a caller when it is calling it has to tell me which is the value for y now you can see that both of these are showing error reason being that now i need to add a colon so that it knows that okay this is the y value and same i need to do here that y value is 20 and you can see that um, both of them have started returning results now this doesn't mean that um, you can change the orders right um, like i can't put y first and say remaining variable is 14 it's, it gives an error saying that it can't invoke um, some with this kind of a argument also you can't even change the order so suppose if the function had the third variable which is also externalized like this um, int variable and if i want to say that z6 and then um, y6 it will still give me an error even after we because we are giving a variable name and saying this is the value for that variable it is still expects them in the same order so order is not changing it just that it is allowing you to actually externalize so that when the people who are using the function and they are trying to put some value in they know what value they are passing and for which reason they are passing it just makes it easier to use the uh, function that's the only reason there you can actually use different internal and external names for a input parameter also in that case you can just um, give your external name and internal name de delimited by a space and that's all and you can see currently these two as soon as i changed y space n this y become unresolved identifier so it is not able to resolve the y identifier because it's an external name and it is not valid anymore here you have to actually change it to n and to make sure it is a valid name because n is your internal name and y is an external so still the callers has to use y and you will keep using n the only benefit here is it gives you a flexibility to use different names and if later on you decide to change the name not all places you need to change the code your external code is still same because you they are using the external variable name and internal code um, can change with the name of the variable which you want to change so that's the only uh, flexibility here so these are all about the basics of the function there are some more advanced concept which i will be covering in my next video to just a recap in this video we have seen how to define a function how to call a function how to add input parameters whether it's a void or a proper input parameters how to define your output parameters what are type castings allowed and what kind of a compile errors you can get as well as uh, we have talked about the external names external parameter names so these will give you just a basic idea how to start using your functions in Swift. To get more coding tips and tutorials, just subscribe to Make Web World.